fuck is up, guys? <laughs> Welcome what to is the up? podcast, the Real Talk Podcast with Travis, myself, and our guest today, DQ Terminator Travis. Uh, what's up, Daniel? What's going on, man? How you what's doing? What's up, Daniel? Hey, man, what's up? Yeah, the Team Terminator in the house. That's right. For- we're all here. This is a great group right here. I'm looking, I'm really been looking forward to having Daniel on this week, yeah. you know? Yes. Andrew couldn't make it. Uh, you know, he had something come up. So it would have been a good, you know, four way talk. Not oh, just- really? I think Andrew probably deserves a show in his own. <laughs> I've actually, I've never talked to him. I think you, I think Travis could probably uh, do a deep dive with him and get some good stuff. Oh man, it would it would be something else. Let me tell you that it'd be it would definitely be it needs its own podcast hour. You know, it really <laughs> yeah, does. Oh, so. that might have been a good thing. Turned out in the end. <laughs> Where is he from? Where He's is- from Georgia, right? He's from Georgia, like yeah. Augusta. Yeah. Okay. Oh wow. So oh so he trains at I three probably. Well, now he's in Vegas and he's at the muscle, the lift factory. Is that what it is, David? The lift factory. I've in seen Vegas? that gym. Yeah. J train. That's where he's at now. Yep. Oh, nice. That's cool. Yeah. yeah. Dude, everyone is moving out to Vegas. Well, you know, Daniel introduced me to Andrew just like randomly. He's like, hey, man, I know this guy. You mean Andrew started talking and we really hit it off. We talk a lot too. Yeah. So he's a cool guy. Yeah, he's a very cool guy. I mean, he, he's very, um, he's very smart. He's, you know, he's definitely has some good competitors himself. He's a good guy to look up, Andrew Fryer. Nice. Cool. Yeah. Awesome. So, Daniel, uh, yes. dude, why don't you tell the people who you are, man? Uh, I'm a 48-year-old bodybuilder. Hold on, hold on, hold on. You're 48? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I get that a lot right there. Um. <laughs> I'm 48, so in fact, it's funny. I was at the gym this week, and I ran into this guy. He's uh, he's I think he said he was 62. Looks really good. He's talked. He might do uh, universe this year, and he said, you know, how old are you? I said 48. I mean, he almost fell over, but he said, he said, man, if you if you go do the 50 class in a couple of years, you're gonna kill it. So, yeah, you know, I, I just. I had a lot of respect for him because he looks so good at that age. But um, I uh, go to go back to the question. Um, I've always loved bodybuilding from a young age. Uh, I, I don't even know how I'd, I started seeing the Flex magazine and stuff like that. Just doing little stupid home workouts at the house. And um, I did a little bit of natural bodybuilding in my 20s, just about four or five shows. Didn't do very well. Um, and then I took a long break from it. And then when I was 35, I jumped back in. And uh, well, how much did you weigh at your first show, Daniel? At my first show? Well, how about we just say this? Well, yeah, I, I'll say probably about, you know, a uh, butter soft 165. Okay. Is this the one where your mother hadn't seen you for so long and you were just like, <laughs> no. Okay, that was in two thousand nine. I was I was one seventy. I was one. Oh, so you came up. You came up a little bit by then, a little bit. A little, yeah, yeah. Just a little. <laughs> I can actually see the trophies in the back. I see some overalls up there. Yeah, there's a couple up there. So, nice. um, it's been a really awesome journey. Um, well, what happened in twenty ten? What what show did you do in twenty ten? Tell me about it. So, I did the SMBF uh, show in Sewanee, Georgia. Um, I'm backstage dreaming of pizza and you know, that's a natty organization and two guys are there talking about how they masked their last cycle. And I'm like, why am I even here? <laughs> so I text my brother and I said, uh, order two pizzas and, um, you know, let's, let's meet in the back. <laughs> so, and then, but another thing is right before that show, I went down to see the, um, the South Carolina state bodybuilding championships at the, um, Oh gosh, what's the name of the place? In Kroger Kroger center. Kroger center. And that that, was in Columbia. Yeah. In 2009 was an amazing year. There was a really good light heavyweight from Anderson. Uh, I know, I'm sorry, a heavyweight from Anderson and then Matlock and, um, 
uh, why am I drawing a blank? Matlock and, um, gosh, what's his name? I can't think of it. Uh, black guy, French. He's got a French background. He's a coach. Um, he's like two, 270 pounds. I competed with him later that the next year. Lionel Baki? Huh? Lionel Bayaki? No, good gosh, no. Um, <laughs> anyway, those guys all battle out. 2009 was so epic. And I was sitting there 170 pounds in a golf shirt that was swallowing me. And I, I saw guys up there I knew that I competed against. I mean, that I that I trained with at the gym. And I was like, I've got to get up there with these guys. And uh, it was it was on from there. I, I, 2009, uh, the end of the summer, I went on a mission. And uh, Mo Newman introduced me to Trey Bennett. She said, Daniel wants to do this show next year. And um, I put a whole year's work into that. So it was really cool. Well, what year did you win the state championship? That was the following year. Okay, that was 2011? 2010. 2010, that's what I'm thinking, right. Yeah, I first did Palmetto Cup, uh, scared out of my mind. I kept telling my coach, Jim Newman, I said, I just, I just really want to just place so I can go to Junior USA's <laughs> and end up winning the light heavyweight, the Masters, and the overall. And uh, I was like, wow. okay, I'm done, I'm out. And oh, Trey wow. Bennett grabbed me and said, dude, you're coming back a month later to the state championship. So, I mean, are you going to tell Trey now? So, yeah. David, are you going to tell Trey now? No, I yeah, can't. I know. <laughs> so, I came vote. back in the state. That's, that's killer, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was, it was an amazing ride. So you're, you're, you're basically right now, you're focused, you got, you know, you got, you're a national level competitor for the most part, besides the qualification, correct? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I've, I've had a couple top five finishes at juniors. And so I would say, you know, at least I can not get embarrassed up there um, on a state, on a national level. So. 100%. Yeah. 100%. So, you know, just a, a funny story is I, I was so set on being a heavyweight and uh, I've had a couple people say, nah, you're a better light heavy. And last year I went up to masters nationals and uh i found out why i should be a light heavy <laughs> yeah I, I i think we both learned that one daniel i think we both learned that one for you man those are some amazing guys that's a so, big voice yeah just structurally amazing bodybuilders i mean yeah. like take my clavicles and add about six inches on each side <laughs> and that's where these guys were at so really good yeah, that's yeah. It's 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 hard to compete, you know, with gen, you know against genetics. Yeah, you can you know you can you cannot add any inches to your shoulders. I mean, to your you can add mass to it, but like with eh. uh -huh. your clavicles are only so big. That's what you yeah. mean, David. They're only so big. Yeah. So yeah. that's why I bought a smaller shirt so I look big on the camera. You know. Yeah, I'm with you, man. <laughs> I've got I've got the short clavicles too. <laughs> Uh, we got we got the quad to compensate for that. That's right. That's right. All right, do you want to jump into some questions? I got a good amount from that thing. So, Travis, how's your day going? Everything's going good, man. Training's been good lately. Me and David worked out the past couple of days, man. And David had 125s on the incline today, Daniel, for about eight reps. Oh, man. That's yeah, nice. I saw it, man. I saw it. It was good. Strong. Yeah. That's awesome. I got the hundreds. I had the hundreds for about six to eight on the on the incline today. Um, All right, Travis. All right, nice. You got some clean reps. Um, nice. Next, I'll, next week we'll I'll touch one thirty fives, and then get back up to one fifties in about two weeks. Nice. That's so, awesome. I've never done. I'm, I've never gone any heavier than one fifties. Hey, check out Sean, Sean uh, Florida uh, yesterday. Oh, dude. The 160s? He's a fucking monster. Sean through 160s? The 160s for a smooth eight. Yeah. Yeah, he's Ooh. 190 pounds. Yeah. That's yeah. dense. I, I honestly don't know how this guy is that strong, dude. It's ridiculous. He is so strong. Wow. 
Yeah. Uh, it's like, it's, it's insane. I mean, his squad, it's insane too. Yeah. Yeah, his hack squats, seven, eight plates aside. Yeah. yeah He's I, the biggest 175 pound guy I've ever seen. Yeah. Mistake. Yeah, agreed. Yeah, he he's he was so he he was a batman weight. Like he came up for like 130. But he's only five foot though, right? Yeah, yeah. It's it's impressive, man. And now that goes back to what I just said. Like you can't compete against genetics. Well, he fucking beat yeah. genetics. He's got those micro joints. Yeah, I don't, I don't think his joints hurt ever, Daniel. It's like they have plenty of lubrication or something, man. Yeah, it's I know. it's wild, dude. Like he he is very impressive. Now let's jump into this. Who do you think can take him down next year or this year? Because I honestly don't think, uh, I mean, all respect to Sean, I don't think he will be, uh, I think like anybody can push him. Like nobody really can jumps out to me that can beat him right now after that showing last year. Well, you know, uh, a couple years back, I was all high on Derek Lunsford, but the guy oh, doesn't have yeah. any shape. Lunsford's potential is amazing, but something's off. Yeah. Well, I mean, the, the only I, thing I, that I see off of him is like he's just over dieting. Like he needs to go to the open. Yeah. You know, well, let me he's coming in soft, though. You know, he's not sharp. Let me get your take on this. I, do you think Sean has completely filled out? No. He's getting close. He's getting close, but I don't think you really can fit much more on that frame, is there? It's like, but, how much more muscle do you actually need in a body like his? I think he's about there. Yeah. So to me, what I see is he was like a, a Bonek like physique. Like, Bonek cannot get any bigger. No. Like, if he did, he will look like Kai in 2016 yeah. when he was doing his double back, you know, back to a bicep, yeah. and yeah, you only yeah. see just slops of meat hanging. It's like, yeah, there's yeah. nothing else but meat. So that's what's going to happen to him. If he gets any bigger, to my eye, I, I, I might be wrong. I like Lunsford, man. I think if Lunsford gets the right, I don't. I mean, I hope. I, I don't want to talk bad about his coach in any way. I would like to see them get it better, or maybe him try something that works better for him with someone else. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's just it's a great potential he has, and to see it not meet the potential is, you know, I don't. That's, that stinks. Yeah. yeah. I mean, what he, I mean, the pictures that he posted about like, you know, seven, eight weeks out from the O at 235 were just nutty. You just think no. there's no way the guy's going to lose. He's yeah. pretty, how old is he? He's only 25, right? 26? Yeah, he's young, like 26, 27. Yeah, give him some time, man. You know who, like, I was really excited about was uh, Ashkenani. Mm -hmm. He looked really good this time. I was surprised. I mean, better than ever. He plays second to flex. And, and it's just like his legs don't like, like they don't have separation. Mm -hmm. They look great from the back, but to the front, it's just like, they're just like smooth. They're hard, but smooth. No, 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 they're smooth and they, they don't match his upper body as the way yeah. they should. Yeah, he's got a crazy, he's got a really crazy upper body. His, his back. Yeah, it's huge. His back one, nuts. One more thing about Sean though, if he were to be able to put on five more pounds in the right places and not lose his lines, who's going to beat him? Yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, me and my – Only Lunsford. Team. I mean, Dan, because how tall is Lunsford? Five, six, five, seven? That's that's pretty tall on that guy five, if he can hit it. Like, he's close to a five, seven mark. Lunsford could be the, the – I mean, I think he's the next in line. If he's conditioned as hell, he could fight with him. Big if. If. Yeah, Huge. But, I mean, he needs to bring up his legs to match his upper body because they're yeah. like really downsized compared to like his. I mean, his front double is great from the you know from the waist up. Mm -hmm. Like he's just like there. There is no density to the muscle when he's you know hitting those those poses. Now he gets peel. I mean, he was lean. I mean, glutes were in, hamstrings were in. Like everything was there, but mm -hmm. just the lack of like mass in in his legs. Yeah. I mean, personally, I like uh, Kamal better than Sean. Yeah. Like, I liked him. Win like, I had him winning. That's going to be a good battle again next year, I think. Yeah. Fucking Kamal is 50 years old. 
<laughs> hey, those old guys. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but I don't, I honestly don't. Whoa, dude, you have Keon coming back next year to the 212. That's right. Keon, so, Keon can take him. That's true. Keon nuts. Yeah. I, I mean, he's, that's a genetic. His shape is so pretty. Yeah. 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 I think he's under good coaching right now. Um, I would have actually liked him to see him stay longer with PJ. I would have too. I thought they had a good thing going. I hate that um, there was a, you know, a misunderstanding of their, whatever they thought. <laughs> yeah. I mean, dude, what PJ with that, that, with this guy and little time was like mind blowing. Yeah, like they were it, close, weren't they? Real close, they were tight. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, it was very impressive. So, I mean, mm-hmm. that's, I mean, that's Keon's decision, you know, that's just personal stuff. But yeah, um, I think Dorian is a good coach too. Yeah, he still has to prove himself a little bit, but I hear good things. Yeah. You know, he's yeah. doing well. Yeah. So, um, I have a question here. You know, going oh. along the Olympia question. Who do you see taking the Olympia title this year? What, you know, uh, how they always say you got to knock out the champ. So if Rami is smart, keeps his weight down, stays tight, who's going to beat him? Yeah, I don't, I honestly don't think anybody's sitting close to him. No. But what I'm more interested in is, you know, knock on wood, fingers crossed. I, I can't, I just want to see Flex Lewis jump in that mix God. because he got I, hurt how many weeks out? Oh, a long time out. Yeah. But that cat, if he comes in as big as he can, as hard as he can, he's going to bypass some names that a lot of people don't expect, I think. He can fight top three. Uh, yeah. I see him fighting for the title, not top three. Like, I, he will give whoever is the champions of Remy right now, I think he will give Remy a run for his money because he's. Question just, Does Flex Lewis flow better than Big Remy? I think so. I do too. I, I do too. Without a doubt. How about, this top, how about this top three? Big Remy, the Persian Wolf, and Flex Lewis. I, 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 I see it happening. Um, nasty. Dude, Dude the, like Persian Wolf was right there this year. He was. He was. Hey, yeah. did you hear Persian Wolf missed his carb up completely because of the airplane schedule? Yeah. So, so Honey Rombud said Persian Wolf wasn't even full blown. Hmm. Yeah, and the thing is, like, he had a straight, a straight two. Like, he was second at the night show. So, if he would have shown mm-hmm. up on Friday night the way he did on Saturday night, like, all the cars will be, you know. Like switched around, um, I think he looked better than 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 uh, what's his name? Sorry, um, Brandon. I think I'm a big Persian Wolf fan, so I mean, yeah, that's, I'm a little, you know. that's that's Lauren's favorite. She loves them. She she, she loves the unibrow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I I think Flex will be like he will be a contender. Um, he's so yeah, superior. I agree. He's so good. Yeah, I think so. Yeah, but what I'm more excited about is like that top five to ten. Because we will always know who the top five is as long as these guys are there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You know, you have Roller coming back, if I mean if he wins the show. Um, Sean Roden that's coming back supposedly. I hope so, man. He's had that case hanging for what two yeah. years now? Ooh. 2018. That sucks. Yeah. Uh now you put Sean Roden into the mix, like you have the combination of like Rami, you know, Flex and Sean. It's like, you know, who do you pick? You know, like Sean is so complete. Oh, she's so complete. So what about Phil? Where's Phil going to go from here? I don't think David? he's coming back. Retired. David? Retired. Huh? Yeah, he's retired. Done. 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 Yeah. I mean, probably should have never come back. Yeah, he might do the rock show because it's just a lot of money. And, right. But I don't I don't see him coming back. I don't either. That that they that stomach issue I think can't be controlled from the surgery, you know? Yeah. But he just lost like, a lot of size too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Mean, the funny thing is like this is so like this is so funny. Oh, Phil is off. He's coming back. He's fucking third in the world. <laughs> you know? Right. And people talk shit about him. He's like 
you know, debatable on being the greatest of all time. Yeah. You know, to me, first one is Ronnie, but... Of course, you know, Ronnie, yeah, yeah. But some people could debate you on it, you know? Yeah. David, you make a great point there, and that just speaks to the level of competitiveness at the top. Yeah. So, you know, we look at Phil and, like, you know, guys like us, here we are, and we're going, ah, he's off, he's small, and all this kind of stuff. And he's still ridiculous. Yeah. But it's just because at that level, it's so competitive and so amazing. If you're off a little, you're done. Yeah, done. Yeah. So, so I, don't, I don't think we'll see him again. No. Um, I, I want to see James Hollingshead. Yes. Uh, dude, I love that guy. He's, My man, I love that dude. And I'm wearing Ian's shirt. <laughs> I see. Yeah, I noticed yeah. that. Yeah, I I would love hey. to see. Go ahead, Daniel. What do you say? Um, I've got a. Sorry, you froze there for a second. Um, I've got this kid who's been training with me. He's a power lifter. He was a power lifter. He's doing getting bodybuilding, and uh, he's strong as an ox. He's big, thick. We'll see if he can diet. He might be some trouble, but uh, oh, really? he's a redhead guy. I'm always calling him Hollingshead because he kind of looks like him. <laughs> <laughs> nice. We all we all like Hollingsheads. Yeah. Ian. Is this guy your training partner now, Daniel? Yeah. Yep. Yep. That's the guy you showed. He's about a, he's a little bit bigger than you. No, nah, he's a good bit bigger than me. He's two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, two fifty five, I think, right now. Yeah. Oh, wow. Yeah. So. Is that country boy? No, he's not. He, he, uh, I think he lived up north and then he moved down to Myrtle Beach and then now he's here in Greenville. Okay, because man, those rat heads country boys are strong. This kid is strong. He's strong. <laughs> he's very strong. Yeah. He, uh, I'm trying to think if he, you know, he does a nice. You sent me a video of him, Daniel, crushing some serious weight. Yeah. He can squat really well. You know, he's pretty solid on bench press, deadlift, stuff like that. So, pretty good nice so let's let we'll switch the question in a minute but just imagine this um ian valier james hunter akeem um do you see nick walker on that like on that like five to ten like six Dude, to i 10? think i do man nick's a freak he's so big yeah but you know what worries me is i and I had somebody say this the other day, it does really worry me. It's like, I feel like Nick, he's pushing it so hard and it reminds me of- Dallas? Yes. Yes. You know what, Nick Nick has the potential and he can jump in, I think some top spots, but the question is how long can he burn like that? Like you said. Yeah. You know? I hadn't thought of it, and somebody mentioned that, and I thought, "Wow, that's that's uh, that's a." Similar. He's got to keep his waistline down. He's got to keep the waist down. Yeah, but I mean, I, I mean, we all do. I mean, we all push it to the max. At I mean, to a certain extent, uh, that's his career. Um, right. I think I think he can be in that like, you know, seven to ten, you know, spot uh, this upcoming year. All right, I'm pulling a name out you mentioned because I I've been watching him. That's Hunter Labrada. Oh, dude, it's he he might shock some people. Yeah, I think so. I I think so. Um, Genetics are very good. One thing that I loved about the guy is just like, like probably like you. I mean, you both did it most likely. I started bodybuilding before I competed. Yeah, you know, mm -hmm. and this guy, I mean, his training is so intense, mm -hmm. and uh like it's just it's it's like i love to see someone train that hard you know just i mean yes. because i've been you know on the other side i mean even though i'm not like a first of all i'm not a professional bodybuilder i'm not a top coach but i've had the pleasure of being able to train with those guys you know with you know the big names i think i mean i had a contract with pro subs like i'll go to dallas and like see these guys train and i've seen how like some pros are just like they sugarcoat the training it's just like a little touch up here a little touch up there because they rely on genetics this mm -hmm. guy training is used fucking uh, he blows anybody out of the water you know like that's one of the things that i really appreciate when i see someone training 
It's just because that's that's the part I love, you know. Yeah, and and it's just like I think he will take his body to the absolute max, and he's going to like, like he's going to live to his dad's name. <laughs> yeah, agreed. Yeah. All right. Let's see what we got here. If you could choose one body part to be the best, what would it be? I'm guessing. I don't. I don't get. I don't quite understand the question. It's like, what would you like your? You know your your. If you could pick one body part to be the best, like you say, I want my arms to grow, which one would you pick? I guess that's a question. I'm not sure. Man, that's hard. I'm, I'm fighting with like body parts that I wish would grow that have always struggled for me. <laughs> But, uh, you know, they say shows win from the back. So maybe your back or my back, my back. Yeah. Um, back, back and legs are always bread and butter yeah but you already, you already have like so a, a body part that you don't have that you would say you wish you could have daniel the daniel chest might need a little extra of um attention well that's okay so now now that's the real that when i said you told that it took 20 years for you to learn to train your chest i, st I still not sure i know how to train it listen <laughs> so that was the body part that i was really thinking about that's the one that causes me the most distress is I really wish I had a better upper chest. Mm -hmm. and, um, I'm working on it. We'll see what happens. It, dude, you, you really came a long way in the past even few years with your chest development. Yeah. Yeah. It's, it's a struggle. Travis, what about you? Chest. What about you, back, Dave? Like, I would say back first, like Daniel, but I really, I mean, the chest I really yeah. need. Dude, my so, arms. My arms mm -hmm. suck ass. <laughs> David horrible. arms can come up some. Thing is like I never I've never trained arms like I was never taught how to train arms like when I trained with my cousin and Gustavo it was just like legs back chest and shoulders like I never trained arms for like literally for like five years like I would do arms every three weeks and now I'm fucking paying for it you know so Wait, arms will definitely bring, be bring those bad boys up Yeah, arms will definitely be the one that I will need to like bring up because they suck. Hell yeah. I started good, training them, you know, not too long ago, but I just don't like training them. It's 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 not fun. Yeah. You know, so yeah, that sucks ass. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, next one. Best training is split for a natural guy. I don't think let's forget about the natural part. <laughs> Best training is split. Uh You know, I I've really changed my mindset on this. Uh, I've always been like a bro split uh, volume guy. But um, over the last year, I moved to a push-pull legs with a uh, low volume approach. And I love it. I really love it. Um, I feel like it's it's helped me out a lot with strength and density. Okay. So um, how are you breaking up your – how are you breaking up your workout? So you're talking about it within a within a body part? Yeah, yeah. Within If you're training back, how do you how, like how do you break down that training session? Let me let me let me do it with chest, shoulders, and, and tries. That that might make a little more sense. So like, um, obviously we talked about the fact that I have this trouble with my chest. So that'll we'll put while I'm fresh, I'll go incline incline press something like that. Then I'll do like a shoulder move, then a tricep move, and then I'll move back into um, chest again um or i or i might i actually my triceps are good enough that i kind of just do them at the very end so i'll alternate between chest and shoulder movements um just about two or three movements for each one um okay. how many yeah. working sets do you have per movement so that's that's a good question so the first set will be just like a warm-up move maybe 12 to 15 reps and then i'll just kind of um I'll move up the weight scale to where I'm looking for my top set where I'm doing as much weight as I possibly can do. Um, and, and those sets going up to that weight will be decreasing in reps. So it might be, say I'm benching, incline bench pressing. So it might be 135 for 15, then it'll be 225 for six, then 275 for two and three. And then I'll do like 315, you know, balls to the wall. Okay. Until I fail. And then I'll do a back off set. Bring the weight back down a little bit and rep it out. Pump it out. 
Okay. But I'm, I'm dropping those weight, those reps down as I go up so I can save my energy for that top set with the most weight. Yeah, we, we have a similar approach. I mean, that's, that's the way I've been training for years. Um, but I mean, here and there, like, I will like take, you know, you know, like two months off, so eight weeks, and then mm -hmm. I will go to a very low intensity training, meaning that my training will be very high volume. Right. And then I'll do for everything, like 15 to 20 reps, yeah. um, but I don't have failure sets. Mm -hmm. And then I'll get back down to a really intense progressive overload where, you know, like I'll do three, 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 three failure, then go to the next one. Gotcha. Um, gotcha. And I mean, that's why I've been able to like grow my legs, you know, to the point there are now and my bag. Um, so the, the guy's asking like for a natural guy, I don't think it truly matters if you're a natural enhanced. I don't think I train natural for a very long time before I said, all right, let me put a, a needle in my ass. So it's, it's a matter of like, you know, fueling your body with the right foods and just like, you know, finding the best training split that works for you. You know, like I'm very short limb. I can move really heavy weight, but that's for me. If you're a tall guy, it might not work for you. You know, like you have to well, like, David, you know, um, like in talking of training splits and just like a couple of, Dorian Yates was famous for a two on one off split, depending two on one off. That was his favorite thing. Um, Tom Platts was a one off one on guy work one day, rest today, work one day, rest today. Victor Martinez is four days on three days off for Pete. Well, I don't, I'm not going to throw in the mentor boys. We now Ronnie know. Coleman, Ronnie Coleman was what, when he's six days a week. Yeah. Yeah. You train everything twice. Throwing doubles, like two a day. Two a day. And right, and right now, when I prep, I do six days a week. And off season, I get about five days a week and two off. But you can't compare Ronnie to anybody. Yeah. He was <laughs> <Daniel>. <laughs> hey, I'll answer, I'll answer the natty thing, too, because, you know, I was yeah, until I was 36. Um, and I would just say – Train as hard as you can, but you, you got to have to make sure you rest. You know, you got to recover, man. Nutrition. So, really Daniel, what would you recommend? What would you recommend? Say you, you're supposed to have chest day, but it's still trash from the other day. Would you do it, or what, how would you push that back then? What, what advice would you give to somebody? I, I probably would take more rest. I mean, the only difference between a natty and a non natty guy is if you take stuff. It's just a help. It's just a ticket for you to be able to work harder. That's it. I mean, that's it. So those guys can't do what a non-natural guy can do. So they're not going to be able to do the volume of work or maybe the heavy. They can't recover. Recover. So that's um, the only difference. You just have to, you have to, to respond to their body better and, and be more in tune and, um, it's going to take longer to recover. Yeah. Yeah. I used to train seven days a week. Oh, wow. I used How to did you recover? Both. Oh, it sucked. But I was also 18 years old. Right. You know, dude, I, I, I didn't like, if I didn't train, I would like, I would not sleep. Right. 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 right, and, right. and so actually I don't, I don't speak about this. Like, I mean, we're in the podcast. I'll take, you know, I'll say whatever. I, I was really anxious for people. Like I didn't like people seeing me train. So I will get off work. I used to work at the insurance agency. No, get done. I had a nine to five. I will go home, eat, do my client check-ins, everything that I had to do. I will go up to bed and wake up around 1030. And then I'll drive to the gym and train at midnight. Oh, wow. Because I didn't like people seeing me work out. I had this fear of just like, fuck, I'm not good enough. I'm not lifting enough. And wow. dude, I'll be at the gym for three hours every single day. Damn. Yeah, I, I actually, I've, I don't think I've ever said this, but my wow. mom will call me on the way back home just to make sure I didn't fall asleep on the, like, while driving. But I had, I used to train with a guy. His name is Ricardo. He, he lives down in Bluffton. He was a construction worker, worker, so he didn't get up until like 8 or 9.30 p.m. He will go home. I used to coach him too. He will go home, take a nap, and then he'll meet me at the gym at 11.30. And then we'll, we'll go all night, dude. Damn, that's the truth. 
but for recovery and you know allowing yourself to grow rest is, is the most important thing that you can possibly do yeah. um i like okay, three on, like yeah i like three on one off two on one off yeah that's, that's my nice. favorite I like split i like that split too yeah so it doesn't matter if you're natural or you're enhanced it, it doesn't matter you're strained daniel are you what how many days are you working out in a row right now without a break oh it's it's funky now i mean I kind of changed it a little bit because I brought me and this guy working out, but we, we don't train more than two days in a row. Do you, how many, oh, how many days do you take off a week from weights? Train four days a week right now. So three days off. Yeah. You feel that you're You feel good. Your body, your joints and everything. Yeah. That's, you know, I was watching a, a video just the other day and it was a video from Luke Sando, God rest his soul. And he said, if you're training right, you're going to want to take rest days. And, um, I, I, my buddy the other day, you know, this kid, Mike, uh, he texted me and he's like, it's three days later and my legs still hurt. Um, <laughs> and you know, we walked out of the gym last night from doing back. And I said, I'm so glad we're not walking on here tomorrow. Yeah. So <laughs> hell yeah. If you're training, right. Uh, you're going to want rest days. Right. That's a good point, man. That's a very good point for people listening to this. That's a great point. I agree with you a thousand percent. Travis, you froze on me. I can hear you. your picture is frozen. Oh, there That's you are. That's a pretty picture, though. Look at that smile. Yeah, it looks good. <laughs> All right, let's see. Uh, Daniel, do you coach any people that you coach online? Do you have clients? Uh, I have in the past. I'm not currently right now. Okay. So. Um says how do you create your clients plan so so we can we can skip that one i don't think we need to go over diets and like training on like how do we create a program um send them to you guys yeah but the thing is like some people think that creating a program is just like let me put this here 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 you know like i get daily you know applications for coaching is like can i have my plan tonight i want to go shopping it's like no you're gonna get your plan like three days from now like you have to yeah. build your plan yeah you know like it takes time to see what your body looks like, what your composition is like, what your sleep is like, what do you work, what's your training? Like, that's not something that we just copy and paste, you know? So you know, we can save that question for, you know, an Instagram live or whatever, not here. Save that one for Andrew Fryer. <laughs> yes. Oh, that's, actually, that's a good one. Yeah. <laughs> oh, who's your favorite bodybuilder? Oh my gosh. That is so hard. I love so many of them. Um, Let's do top five. Let's I, do top five. I got to say, Ronnie Coleman, you just got to have the goat in there. <laughs> um, I'm going to say Tom Platts for his insanity. And I mean, not his legs were cool and all that, but it's I love his approach to training. Just yeah. life or death, you know? Um, there's no way I can go to five. Uh, Dorian... <laughs> <laughs> um maybe jay you know i met jay about three or four times and jay's always been super nice um and maybe flex lewis all right i like that what about branch warren <laughs> <laughs> Try oh, what, about on. Phil what about branch and phil <laughs> what about old branch <laughs> yeah they're not no, I mean, I respect what they did, but, you know, being a fan, trying to talk to them one time, maybe didn't have the best interaction. I got you. I understand. I met, I was at the Europa Games in Charlotte in 2016, and Branch was working with um, this company from Brazil. What's the name? Black Skull. Uh-huh. Is that the Black name? Skull. Yep. So, dude, I never do a line to meet anybody. Like, fuck you. Like, you don't know me. I don't know you. <laughs> so I stood in line because I wanted to meet this guy. I got in line. I'm the first one. It's like, all right, I'm going to meet this guy. I got to where he was and he walked out. <laughs> yeah, that's about right. <laughs> and I was like, fuck you. But he's, I think he's a cool guy. But he didn't say hi to me or anything. So whatever. Yeah. Hey, you and me are in the same boat. He didn't say <laughs> hi to me. <laughs> Right, he shook my hand, Adam. He didn't shake mine, but he didn't do it with a smile. <laughs> uh, he, I don't think he smiles often. <laughs> Travis, where are your top five? 
Ronnie, for sure, right there. Um, you know what? I mean, I recently, even though like the Persian Wolf is kind of new on the scene, he's really risen to the, like the top of like one of my favorite. I like I like watching him every time he comes on. I like watching him. He's always you know in the always in good shape, and I, I, I enjoy watching him on stage. So him, the Persian Wolf. Um, let me see here. You know what? I, I got to say Branch Warren, man. I never liked him as much, but I never see him tra – people train like him again, even though uh, he might get – he never got hurt himself. That's <laughs> he what he got, got hurt. He got, yeah, he got hurt getting off of a horse. That's how he got hurt. So I know that's kind of like a wild card, but you got to admit, Branch did get second in the Olympia one year. Yeah, man. You know, that's pretty legit. And, you know, I did like, you know, this is kind of like a weird one too. Victor Martinez was pretty good for a while. Oh man, I liked Victor for a while, you know, and so I did follow Victor for a long time. I have to say, and I, and I did enjoy that. I hate how he fell off on that, you know. Yeah, what was what two thousand seven, where he got like second in Olympia. He was supposed to be like the next big thing. Remember, yeah. you know. So that's four right there, and I would have to say the fifth one. Um, somebody who's always coming in pilled, you know. You got to respect. Um. <sighs> This is a tough one right here. Each year, I mean, uh, you know what? I'm gonna say this is a weird, who I like to see on stage. Okay, it's not gonna, I would say a favorite. Max Charles is pretty tight all the time. Max Charles? I'm throwing you a rare, a wild card on that one. What? <laughs> okay. <laughs> this is why I Okay, I got Max Charles. We'll, we'll go back. We'll go back on that one right there. Yeah, no, you got to take your answer. Fuck out of here. <laughs> I like Tom Platts. Platts. Uh, you got to keep your five. Platts. I got my five. Not, not Max Charles. Yeah. Tom Platts is my last one. No, you, hey, you David, keep Max Charles. David, you save, save Travis right here because he's floundering. Uh, give us your top five. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're not gonna live that one down, <laughs> Travis. Yeah. No, Max I'm gonna Charles. make you a sure, and I'm gonna have Max Charles fanboy team. Uh. <laughs> yeah, nice. Travis, you're gonna like you know you're gonna know I like this one. My favorite <laughs> bodybuilder of all time. He will be the greatest until the day he dies. Is Lee Priest. Oh, oh yeah, 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 yeah. He Ooh. is. He is my favorite bodybuilder. Like, dude, there is nobody better than Lee Priest. I think he's, he's the amazing. greatest. Right after Lee is the closest body that you could get to Lee's will be Flex. Mm -hmm. and like just, I mean, I'm you know I'm, I'm the shortest guy in this one, so this two are like my favorite bodybuilders. Right, time uh, out. If you're following this, I'm. I think I know who your third one's going to be. How do you talk to Yamaguchi? No, well, no, I thought of another one. So go ahead. Give us your next one. If, if you're following this line of thinking. This is great. I love this. <laughs> okay. Um, so Lee Priest, Flex Lewis, Lee Labrada. Nice. Um, he's just, I mean, he's just like, dude. Um, next one is going to be Rich Gaspari. Ah, nice. Nathan, and we didn't mention Princess Bamfado. He's great too, but he he's too thin. <laughs> <laughs> um, and last one is going to be Luke. Luke Sandu. Yeah. Okay, so you skipped who I thought. I was like, okay, he's liking these short guys. I thought you were gonna say Sean Ray. Fuck you, fuck Sean Ray. I don't like Sean Ray. Sean Ray, man. Sean Ray is <laughs> I like Sean Ray's physique, actually. I do a lot. All right, you ready for this? I hope he watches this video. <laughs> Look. <laughs> Where, where's Sean right here? Sean. <laughs> I was thinking of height. You know, I like I, Sean Ray a lot, actually. I think he's good. Lee's controversial. Yeah, nothing. He blogged me. Oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah, he called me out in one wow. post. Like I posted something. Oh, you know Roy, uh, Rody, Rod, Rory Lamar. I think that's his name. It's an old school guy. Um, he was doing this is like back in 2015, 2016. 
he posted a double classic double like actually 2016 because classic had just came out so this is the first year of classic bodybuilding um, men's classic so this guy posted a double bicep challenge um you know tag me on your double bicep shot so he put his picture next to mine and he posted it on his page right he's like all right david great double bicep blah 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 and sean ray i don't know why he he uh replied to the picture he's like you have no business in bodybuilding oh man dude I'm i'm a little kid with a dream you know so yeah i don't like sean ray what about flex wheeler Oh, how did we miss that guy? I miss Flex, man. I should do Flex in there. I think I mix Flex. I ha- I got my Flex. We got to start all over. <laughs> yeah, I think, I mean, they're, I mean, Flex will is just like, I mean, uncrowned Mr. Olympia, you know? Yeah. Um, I don't like the term uncrowned because if you were not crowned, it's just because you weren't good enough to win. Yeah. So that's just my personal opinion. But I mean, he was, he's one of the greatest of all time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah, uh, it, it definitely good. Um, what's this other guy's name? Um, what's Sean uh, with, in that same era of bodybuilding? Um, uh, gosh, what's he? Bob Dillette? No, 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 no. Um, Chris Cormier? Chris Cormier. Chris Cormier. Yeah. What dude? I mean, uh, it's insane. Like he it just man. If he didn't party the way he did, he didn't really could have fought with a top notch. Yeah, he's the Olympia of partying. Yeah, like the other 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 bodybuilders around his era would say, if Chris didn't party the way he did, he could have been so much even even better than he was. I've heard I've heard some really good stories about this guys of a guy that we all know that was in that in that time with them, like dude. I heard that was wild. <laughs> yeah, so uh, we all know the guy. I just can you know say his name, dude. He's told me like all the crazy stories. Like people ask me sometimes if I touch it, how do you know about this? It's like, well, I know the guy who was right next to you. Wow. So we'll talk about it off camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, crazy stories. All right, let's see what else we got here. Um, oh, is Daniel single? Yes. <laughs> Oh, latest hit him up. (laughs) Question: Um, Who was your first coach? Jim Newman, Mo Newman's wife. Oh, nice. Um, That was my first. Yeah, they're they're. I mean, Mo Mo Newman's. All right. (laughs) They're great. I I love Mo and Jim. It's it's just they're both really really nice people. Yeah, they're awesome. Mo always give me compliments on my shoe game. You know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most so positive. She really is. She's yeah. so positive to be around, you know? Yeah, she's fantastic. Travis, who was your first coach? And we've talked about this already. Well, you know, like I said, there was Glenn Herring, who was local, but my first, like, I, I consider, like, pro-level coach was Fockery Mubarak. Was Fockery. Okay. Okay. And, and, I, and I felt he did teach me a lot, you know, definitely. And I was, um, I was happy with it. I definitely felt he was a good coach. I wasn't upset that I hired him in any way. I learned a lot from him. Nice, nice. It was good. That's good. Um, well, my first coach were the forums <laughs> that I had to translate because I, th- I didn't know any English. And that's that awesome thing, that you translate it. That's there great. There was no translation for the websites. So if you were, I was in Venezuela. If I wanted to look like read the forums, like I would have to like copy everything. I mean, copy. There wasn't no copy. I had to type. Um, and then wow. just translate it and see what the fuck they were saying. Uh, so that was my first coach. Uh, <laughs> uh, dude, I, it's just not my coach, but my mentor. Like most of the stuff that I know and I've, I mean, it's just like the information that I still have saved here that I haven't been able to use is my porter. Yep. Um, I am mad. I mean, rest in peace. Matt helped me before I even started, comp- started competing. That is so, Matt's such a good person. He really was. Yeah. Um, So, yeah, I will ask him questions 
And then whatever he said, I will like, you know, translate it and learn from him. Um, he helped me for a, for a long time. So, it's very cool. Yeah. Yeah, it that's, was, uh, I mean... That's a good person to learn from because there's a lot of idiots in the industry. Oh, man. I, we can't, I don't have enough fingers to count them. Um, oh, that's a good question. Most cardio you've ever done for a prep, I'm guessing? Uh, probably two hours a day. Okay, I got you beat. Travis, you. Uh, but I... That was a very bad situation. Um, tried, we just, you know, it, I, I made the decision with my coach at the time. We just thought, hey, let's give this a shot. And we got really aggressive with food and everything. And I got way too heavy, 260 pounds. Oh, yeah. How was, much sweet potato have you eaten at once, Daniel? That's the question. <laughs> oh, man. Listen, there would be. I'll tell you this, here's, here's my post-workout. My post-workout was two scoops of protein powder with a, literally 16 ounces of jasmine rice and <laughs> doused in honey. <laughs> and I'd David, to, what do you think about that? I'd have that's, to eat that, like two hours later. That's, that's still baby level. Whew. I'm gonna give you my post-workout because I still have the plan on my email. <laughs> Uh, first of all, I want you to, this, this right here, Daniel, y'all worked with the same person. Oh, wow. So yeah, I had pre-workout first. I had 200, um, micrograms of ipermorlin and GHRP6. Gotcha. Post-workout was the same thing. And I had, uh, two scoops of, uh, I had intro workout, 32 ounces of apple juice, uh, post-workout. I had 16 ounces of sweet potatoes, eight ounces of black beans, and one bacon. Whoa. And granted, no insulin. <laughs> yeah. No slin? No. No slin. No. Whoa. Whoa. Yeah. How so many meals were you eating at the time? Seven. <laughs> that, that meal I gave you was one of 10. Oh. oh. Shit. That. <laughs> Not to not, I'm not one upping you because man, that is one serious post workout meal. It was horrible. Whoa. That is yeah. huge. My y'all boys eat, man. I, I respect it, man. Y'all boys can eat. It was funny, dude, because my breakfast was right after faster cardio. Because if not, I couldn't eat it. I'd had two cups of oats, um, two bananas, 200 grams of uh blueberries. Was it a whole, yeah, it was. 24 ounces of egg whites and um, peanut butter, two tablespoons. Oh my God. What weight did you get up to? Good grief. 236. Man. But here's the thing. That was a fat 236. Like, it was, <laughs> oh, I, <laughs> I was love handles. Daniel, you've been, what have you been, 260, Daniel? Right? That was it. Yeah, I was so fat. Yeah. Now, was, you look like Lee Priest in his bulking season. Yeah. Yeah. I was 236. I, I, I was only 21. 20. Ooh. Bet you're out of breath when you tied your shoes. Dude, it was horrible. I have <laughs> pictures in my phone. It was horrible. <laughs> yeah, it was it was bad. I, I we need to put up a, a side by side of you and me in our fat pictures. I'm gonna send it to you. That's <laughs> I'll send you mine. I'll uh, send deal. You I, I have him. I have him. So we'll put them together. But here's the thing, dude, as fat as I was, that's the strongest I have ever been. Really? Did you not feel like at a certain point your performance started to go down? Because mine definitely did. It, I, I, at some point, like at the very like tip, like I've never been heavier than 236. That was my heaviest ever. Yeah. Um, at 230, dude, I was just like, I Jesus. actually, a video came up a few days ago. Uh, from four years ago, I had five plates and a quarter and I'm repping it for like 12 reps. Like it was just like bouncing, like up and down, like nothing. Wow. Like I could press 150s like for good, you know, 12, 14 reps, but it just didn't look good. Like my body wasn't just like, I was just moving weight. Yeah. Yeah. So we're stimulating muscle. Yeah. Travis, you don't eat anything. 
<laughs> Try to get all the calories from the Apple, biggest Apple I've ever been is two oh seven. I wasn't gonna biggest. say it. I'm glad David did. <laughs> I that, that's my main thing that holds. I've never been above ten percent body fat in the past freaking eight, probably twelve years. You say you're heavy. Two oh seven. I'm gonna coach Travis. Two oh seven is the biggest I've ever been, and that was about nine percent body fat. <laughs> Yeah, I That's have to. Yeah, I'm fighting to get to break two ten right now. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, and I'm, I'm I'm pretty lean right now though. See? Yeah, you are. <sighs> oh, look at it! <laughs> yeah. Look at it! <laughs> yeah, stay shredded. All right. To answer the actual question, the most amount of cardio I've done is three hours. Oh man! Yeah. Damn, I've done 55 and 45. So I've done a little bit over an hour and a half, and that's it. Yeah, three hours with that same coach that gave me the food. We a zombie? Oh, it was horrible. It was yeah. horrible. Yeah. And right after that, right after that, um, that really high, you know, off season, it was transitioned right into keto. I, Woo. Yeah. Three hours of cardio. Mm. Um, I had Fasted cardio. I had pre-workout cardio and had post-workout cardio, and then another session at midnight. Woo! Yeah. <laughs> hey, I did a. I had an issue when I was dieting down from that two hundred and sixty. When I would do pre-workout cardio, I would have a sugar crash, and um, this is when I was dieting, obviously. And uh, <laughs> you, know, you look at a bright light, or you look at the sun, and like you close your eyes and you still see it. Yeah. I would, I would do, I would be on the elliptical and I would see that sun and there would be times where I'd have to wait a couple minutes before I could actually see the train. I know exactly what number your intensity was and how long your cardio was on that pre-workout cardio. <laughs> that is the most specific cardio I have ever done in my life. Yeah, man, that was rough. Yeah. Mm. Never yeah. again. Uh, but, I think we already answered it. What do you say? Go ahead. Say that's kind of what kind of led me over to Travis. It's actually another question. It's like, when do you start working with Travis? 2016. Uh, I had been watching his guys and everybody was coming in shape. And um, I knew that's what I needed. That's, that was the missing piece of the puzzle for me. So I contacted him. Uh, actually, I ran into him at Junior USA's. We sat down we talked. And, talked, and he didn't know it, but it was a job interview. And uh, <laughs> so I liked his ideas and his approach. And we started training. And in 2017, we did Charlotte Cup. We nailed it. We knocked it out the park. And you, you won that show. Won that show. Uh, Daniel, tell him that close. Dennis Dutch host. Yeah. Okay, David, you know Dutch? Yeah, Travis told me about the story. Yeah. Go ahead, Daniel, tell him. Dutch is, um, is uh, he came from the old school and he was, he was one to not give very many compliments. And he walked up after prejudging and we both kind of looked at him with those scared eyes, you know, and uh, <laughs> looked at Travis and he went that close. <laughs> and Travis is like, I don't, you didn't know what to say. <laughs> and he said, that, you know, that means we did really good. <laughs> and he said, you're that close from pro conditioning. And then to be Dutch, he said, you want to fight me about it? <laughs> said, no, I agree. I agree. <laughs> but yeah, we absolutely nailed that. One. Nice. Remember when you walked out on stage, everybody in the crowd was like, <laughs> like, it, it was like insane, insane. The whole crowd was just captivated because Daniel just blew it out the water. When I uh, when I walked when I walked into the tanning area the night before, like all the guys were there getting tans, and I walked in, and the dude said, "Well, shit, there goes the overall." <laughs> that was pretty cool. Daniel, yeah. tell David how you ran out of food and you had to call me up. <laughs> this is a cool story. So we were trying to pump as much food in me as possible and um we had run out of food and uh it was going to the night show we were trying to figure out what i could do to eat to carve up and i was like 
uh, I see the judges table up there. I see all these muffins and stuff. <laughs> we raided the judges table. <laughs> you got up there and got it. <laughs> it was really wild because uh, it didn't do me any good because I carved up. I don't even know what time. I ended up getting up there at the very end of the show at like 12.30 a.m. Oh, shit. Everything yeah. was just sitting there. So, yeah. Oh, just, yeah. It was awful. We did overall pictures right at 1 a.m. Damn. Wow. Yeah. And then uh, I was with a friend, and she had ordered a $130 plate of sushi. <laughs> Hotel right across the street. Walked over there. Between her and I, absolutely murdered it in about 20 minutes. <laughs> nice. Yeah, it was cool. Damn it, you and Daniel got to get, to get together and have an eat off sometime, oh, you know? Dude, any day. <laughs> we'll have someone record it. I don't think anybody can eat more than I can. We'll, we'll let Travis record it because he won't need to eat. I know. <laughs> I'll be done after like eight rolls. Yeah, he's going to have a uh, cherry pie filling. Hey, I'll eat that all day. That's all he eats. That's right. <laughs> cherry pie filling. All right, let's see. Uh, Heather, what is worse than forgetting your headphones? <laughs> I don't know who this is. Forgetting your phone. There is nothing worse <laughs> than forgetting your headphones. Uh, it's really funny. I know who asked this question. Uh, she forgot her headphones at the gym one day. I had mine, and I pretty much made fun of her the whole time because she was miserable. <laughs> nice. Although... I have been training with this guy recently and we didn't wear headphones for a little while. We kind of went through a phase where we didn't do it and we would just joke about doing these killer sets of squats where like, you know, I don't even know. You know, I wouldn't wear headphones in your company. You wouldn't? No, I got, it was too good the conversation, man. I couldn't. Well, we went back to the headphones. It just helps us to keep from talking and we get our right. sets faster, so. So yeah. right now, I mean, I'm, I've been trying, I trained with Travis, I mean, like two days this past week or like last week and this week mm -hmm. or than that, I train on my own. I don't train with anybody. Yeah. I have a client, his name is Steve. Uh, he absolutely like, he's my best friend. He's the yeah. guy that I posted like shredded. He's like almost 60. He looks great in his fifties, right? <laughs> yeah. Nice. Nice. So he will be the one that trains with me. But the thing is like every single thing that he does training, it's from me. Like he's training his mind, but if I train on my own and I train at Trace, um, I'm there really early and I turn the music off. I don't like music when I'm training. So nothing at all. Just no, I don't, I don't like to listen to anything. Yeah. I don't, I, I like sometimes like people, they wait for the drop for the set, you know, like, they, they get, fuck that. Like, dude, I need to get in my head. Make sure I have the perfect stance, everything, then, then I, I get into it. I don't like music. I don't like distractions. Well, I, I don't, I don't want to be doing some, you know, death set of squats to who, Taylor Swift, whoever. Yeah. I mean, no, hell no. I got to yeah. have a little music, man. I like music. It does me well. Yeah, but that, that's why, that's why I, I turn it off. So, when, like, when I'm at Trace training on my own, like, yeah. it's just me and the bar, man. Dave, you just want to hear the clanging of the iron. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> you got to get a work, good workout partner who tells you you suck through the whole set. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I just, I'm still looking for a partner because Travis and I wouldn't train daily. I'm still looking for a partner that likes to push hard. Like, likes to go. I, I love going to failure. Like, dude, yeah. I feel great going to fucking failure. Right. Travis can testify right. for that. Yep. I watched him the other day after doing 100. And he, Daniel, he lifted 135 pounds for 50 reps. He squatted that, 135 in a row. Nasty. It was yeah. pretty good, man. It was solid. After he squatted 315 for like 12 or 15 reps. That's good. It's like, good. dude, I, I just love like that intensity of just like, I, I didn't do that. <laughs> you know? So I hope you didn't Andrew watches Travis? it. I want him to get a light, a light workout with me. Huh? Dude, Daniel, I want to testify that Daniel trains hard as shit. I, I'm saying I hope Adrian is watching this because I want him to get a late workout in with me. Oh, yeah. You need to wreck Adrian. You need to wreck him. <laughs> <laughs> you know who trains hard? That's actually, I don't know. if you, you know Cole? Cole, last name. Hammer? Yeah. He Cole trains. We used to train together. 
when I lived in, in Beaufort. Yeah. Um, he he goes hard. He lives uh, just a few miles from here. Oh, really? Where I live. Yeah. Yeah. But he trains in the gym, Daniel? No, he trains a different gym than I do. That does a genetic free. Yeah. Cole yeah, he's good, got man. a waist the size of my, I don't know, cat. Yeah. Just super tiny. Yeah, we, we used to train together for probably like close to two years when he was yeah. down in, in, in Bluffton. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Cool guy. All right, let's yeah. see what else we have here. Hang on one second. All right. Oh, try this. That this is a good question. Hold on. Let me. I think I lost some of them. Let's see. Gosh, this is bad error now. I forgot the questions. <laughs> Where are they? Jesus. Oh, here it is. Best GDA. Travis, that's a good question for you. What is it? What best what? Best GDA. GDA? Yeah, that's a good that's a good question. My, my favorite my favorite glucose disposal agent is actually um Slim Troll Max by um Natty Nutrition. I've never heard of it. It's great. It's like twenty dollars, man. It has great ingredients. You can. Travis, I can hear you. Lost your audio, Trav. Can't hear you. What did he do? Put your headphones on. Now. Lost your audio. Can you hear me now? I, yeah, I can't can. now. All right, sorry guys. Um, so best GDA, right? Yeah. Slim Troll Max 2, and it's by um, Natty Nutrition. You can get it at Tiger Fitness or from Natty Nutrition. Um, $20 for the GDA. It's great. Oh, wow. I do like it a lot. And, um, of course, Apex Nutrition, North Charleston. Vince got you a GDA. <laughs> All right, Vince. But um, I do like Slim Troll Max a lot. It's my favorite GDA for the price. Okay. Now, you use any? Um, <laughs> right now, I'm not. I'm sorry, go ahead, Daniel. Oh, I thought he asked me. Uh, not right now, I'm not using any. Okay. I like um, Glycolog. Glycolog is good. Yeah. A little expensive, but it's good. It's, it's quality. I mean, the, the, the amount of chromium that it has in, it's, it's, it's really good. Legit. It's, it's good quality. How many times do you take it a day? Just whatever, however, however many times you told me to take it. Well, yeah, right, I got you, I got you, I got you. <laughs> <laughs> so it's like what three meals yes yeah, so i was thinking three yeah that's it's good pretty i like i like taking a gda and filling a pump like 50 minutes after taking it right you know um, that's when you I, know it's I, good I, yeah i've used some and it's just like you know i don't i don't feel it mm -mm. so yeah all right i think we only have a few more it's been a while let's see where's the next one next question Top competitors in South Carolina. Oh boy. Do you want to, um, gosh, I mean, do we have to go by division or by overall performance? And is it amateurs or pro? How about, how about potential and record? Okay. Let's, let's go for that. I don't know. I don't know if I'm qualified to answer this question. Because like there, huh? what do you say? I would say Vince Kraus is one of them. Vince, yeah, I'd say Vince for sure, for sure. Yeah, the man. the thing is, there's a lot of guys that were really good in the state who have now moved on to being professionals. So yeah, it's sort of a new crop that needs to come for sure. up. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, Vince. I mean, he's the state champion in South Carolina, North Carolina. Yeah. Um, yeah. I don't I mean in bodybuilding. I don't know. What about Daniel? What about Darius Buff? Uh, I think I lost your audio again, Travis. But yeah, Darius, who now is a pro, but yeah. you know he did a lot of a lot of shows and won a lot of shows. I think I think the reason this is a hard question to answer is because our industry has kind of changed and bodybuilding isn't quite what it is now. I would say like in the Northeast, it's really strong. 
but I think South Carolina is still in a weird phase in bodybuilding, and there's yeah. not as yeah. many as there were. Um, dude, I feel like South Carolina, North Carolina, is that men's physique state. Yeah. And sorry, boys, I coach you guys, but I'm a bodybuilding fan. Dude, and whenever you go to a South Carolina, North Carolina show, you're happy to see like a few good bodybuilders, you know? Yeah. I like to see freaks, you know? Like, I like to see like really hard work. Yeah. I do too. And there's a lot of good competitors in the Carolinas. I'm not trying to chop on anybody, but yeah. bodybuilding is just not as deep as it used to be. Yeah. Well, I just say this. Um, I just thought of the guy's name I was thinking about earlier. His name Elvis. Uh, Elvis. You know, I'll just be honest. When I won in 2010, he was Carolina, huge. But well, what I was going to say is, it's like in that show, everybody knew right away it was between me and him. And that's the way it is now in most shows around here. Like you'll watch bodybuilding and you'll say, either like this guy won yeah. or it's going to be coming down to these two guys. But in 2009, there were like four or five guys that were anybody could win it. Yeah. And it's just, it's just, there's not as many that are doing it now. Yeah. It, it, you know, we don't see that often, you know? Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, how do you feel about the conditioning of the athletes these days in general? Uh, it, it went, it's down. No, go ahead, Dan. I'd say it's down, but I think it goes beyond all that, too. I think it goes to density and everything. It's mm -hmm. just, I know if Dutch was alive and on this podcast, he'd be railing about it. Just, <laughs> just the work ethic in general. I really wish, you know, a lot of people would go back to the old school and, you know, it's not that you can't have life balance and be a good bodybuilder and train hard. But when you walk in the gym, it's time to go to war, yeah. stick to your diet. You know, do you think you can live life and do all that too? But you're right. I mean, the product is down most of all, overall. Yeah, I think you can like, you can kind of like pick point who you know will be in shape just because with who they work with. Yeah. You know, yeah. so... That's, but I mean, like the guy that went against Vince at the show, really tall guy. Mm -hmm. uh, Larry, oh, oh, Larry Waters. Dude, great conditioning. Like he was peeled, like he was lean, mm -hmm. you know? Thing is like he was tall, but I mean, he was, I mean, he was a great bodybuilder. Mm -hmm. And then, I mean, Hobbs went on to go pro two weeks later. But he was off at that show. He was off at that show. Vince, I don't know if Vince could have handled him when Hobbs was on. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's a lot of mass on Hobbs. Like, he's... It's a lot of mass. It's 70 pounds on Vince. Yeah, yeah, I'm actually... I'm glad that he got his pro car. I mean, he, he, he worked hard he for it. it. Yeah, yeah, he earned it. But, yeah, that guy, Larry... I mean, would have he been, you know, three inches shorter? I think he would have taken everything. Because his skin was so tight. Like, he had the muscle. You know, it's just like... That's the condition that we're missing. Now, conditioning, he was, conditioning was good. It's just the Larry Waters legs, and he, he was so tall and skinny, just, you know, but the conditioning was there. Yeah, he was, he was very lean. Mm -hmm. yeah. Travis froze again. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, I mean, Vince was the most conditioned person at that show. Like, he was, he was nutty to look at, you know? Yeah. He was and very, that's very so lean. Cool. That's one thing about it. Because the product is down overall, uh -huh. you get an extra appreciation. You see somebody like Vince come out because for those of us who have experienced that, you see that and you're like, okay, that guy suffered. He put in the work. There's the product right there. That's what we're looking for. Yeah. So it really stands out when somebody brings it. And he always brings conditioning. I mean, Vince is always sharp. Yeah, for yeah, sure. Yeah, but... You know, I'm going to have to trash on Vince a little bit because Vince can just eat angel food cake all day and still look good. So I'm, <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just jealous. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not taking food cake anything, cake. Away, anything yeah. away from Vince. It's just uh, he's got a killer metabolism, man, and that kid mm -hmm. brings it every time. Yeah, it's hard I, to keep him full. Yeah, I honestly just cannot believe he weighs what he weighs. Yeah. He looks 80 pounds heavier. Yeah. 
Yeah. Yeah. I, I'm excited to see what he's going to do in bodybuilding as opposed yeah, to for sure. Yeah, for sure. Now he doesn't have to make that weight cap anymore. I mean, I feel like three pounds of muscle on him. It's a lot. A lot. Just because the way he carries his, you know, his muscle. Like he's so he's dense. Crazy. Yeah. Dude, I stood beside him the other day and I realized why they call him Buff Nugget. <laughs> he's a big dude for sure. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Travis, we got that question again. Top coaches in South Carolina. Like, why do people want to know this? We already answered it. Do your homework. Before, your homework. before you hire a coach, look at their track record. It was like, if you're a bikini competitor, why would you ever go to a bodybuilding, you know, coach? Right. If you're a men's PC guy, now, it, here's the thing. It's all a process of dieting. If they can get someone lean, they can probably get you lean as well. But look at the track record. Like if you're look a at, girl. Look at, look at athletes that are competing. Find out if they're in shape, find out who their coach is. If you start yeah. seeing a pattern, there you go. Yeah. 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 That's it. That's, you know what? That's because there's a lot of people out there that are spitting strong opinions, but really don't have too much to back that up. You know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to say they're not smart, but it's always nice to see a little bit of a resume or maybe somebody they've worked with a little bit. And you and what you got to look for too is a coach that has multiple athletes that are good. Because yep. not to take anything away from either of them, but you got a Vince who can eat a pound of angel food cake a day and be shredded. Mm -hmm. He can make another coach look good because he can handle a ton of food and look great. Right. Right. So if you have a coach that's making three or four different people with different styles of bodies and metabolisms and he's getting them all in shape, that cat knows what he's doing. Right. Yeah. That's a good point, Daniel. That's really good advice, man. That's great advice. Like, dude, I like I compete in bodybuilding, right? Um, and when someone comes to me, it's like I can I can definitely coach you, but I have never coached you know, someone to be in like in a bodybuilding stage. So, you know, I will sell, you know, you can go to Travis or no, you can do your own risk. I will give you certain names that I know that they will get you in shape because they work with bodybuilders. Right. Now you tell me, David, have a wellness girl, a bikini girl. I was like, all right, bring them on. You know, because they will be in shape. They will show up and it's like, oh shit. Yeah. Like, you know, so like I've worked with a few men's physique guys, but there's, you did good with men's physique, David. You do uh, well with men's physique. You do well with men's physique. Yeah. Yeah. I you helped clean the day with some posing, man. You sharpened him up. <laughs> yeah. And, like, dude, I work with the girls. And it's like, I want to grow my legs and I want to be lean. It's like, that's what I do. You know, like, that's, that's why I work with girls. And that's why they come to me. So, to go back to the question, you just do your research. You know, like, Look for the coaches that have the athletes that you look up to. Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's a very straight answer. I don't think there is the best coach in the state or, you know, it's like Chris Aceto is the best coach. That's it. Yeah. <laughs> let's leave it at that. So let's leave it at that. Um, you, you need to work with someone who fits your character, who is willing to work, you know, with your goal. And that yep. you like that you have a good match, you know. Help you reach your goal. That's yeah. the main thing. Yep. And let's be honest too. I mean, there are, are good and bad coaches, and there are pitfalls that you can fall into with a bad coach. But a lot of time, the limiting factor really is the client. Without and are they willing to put in the work? So yep. make sure you're handling your end. If you aren't handling your end, you can't tell whether or not your coach is good or not. Yeah. Nope. Because you follow his plan to a T and then it you suck, well then maybe it's your coach. But if you more often than not, when you're pointing your fingers at your coach, you really didn't follow the plan. Yeah. Nope. And answering the saying on that question, just don't jump from coach to coach to coach to coach to coach. Right. Because that's that what's gonna happen. You're building a resume for yourself. It's like, oh well, he was just with four coaches over the past 12 months. It was yeah. she got or he got never never got in shape. It's like, well, was it really the coach? Did you actually allow your coach to know your body? Right, right. And one thing just 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 to make this clear, Travis has Team Terminator. 
I have, you know, a team, you know, brazen because I mean, that that's her name. We work one-on-one with a client. There's no such a thing as a team, you know, like the work is one-on-one. Like Daniel works with Travis and nobody else. So that's something that they have to have clear, you know? Yep. Like, oh, I'm going to join the team because that team has really good athletes. And I'm going to look at, no, the fuck no, you're not. <laughs> like you're working with your coach and that coach, he owns that team, that business. So like I said, I mean, just find the vet, the best fit for you. That's, yeah. that's how you find the best coach and, you know, and for your niche for that, that's it. So there's good I'm advice. Him, it's like, well, he's the best coach because he made two people look good. You know, like that's just, just find the best for you. Yeah. Agreed. So, all right, dude, we've been on for a while now. Let's do one more question and we'll do it again next week. If you want. Yeah. <laughs> Rock it. All right. Deal. What are, I have one question here. Uh, what are the plans for the competing season this year? Uh, <laughs> not sure. We're just, uh, we're training like, uh, we're staying in shape, training hard, and um, we haven't decided completely, but we have some ideas, so. We got some ideas, we got some ideas. We got some ideas, so. <laughs> I'm going to repeat exactly the same thing that Daniel said. There we you go. David, we got some ideas. <laughs> yeah, and Travis is going to say exactly the same thing. We got some ideas. Exactly, yep, so, yep. Yep. All right, Daniel. Boys, let's wrap it up, man. It was good. Daniel. Dude, it was great, great, man. Daniel, thank you. Hey, thank you, guys. It was a blast. I had a good time. That All was right, fun, Daniel. man. All right. Guys, catch us in the next episode. Peace. David, good job, brother. We rocked it out. Thanks, man.